I would like to welcome right now um, Dr. Shelley Bridgewater from the Turks and Caicos Islands. I'm going to ask Dr. Bridgewater to do us the pleasure of introducing the speakers for her panel um, and then to make a presentation as well on investment opportunities in the ag tech sector the Turks and Caicos Islands. Uh, Dr. Bridgewater, over to you. I think good afternoon to all adhering to protocols already established. I wish to welcome and introduce you to the Premier, the Honorable Charles Washington Missick of the Turks and Caicos Islands, followed by the Honorable Josephine Connolly, Minister with Responsibility for the Department of Agriculture. Without further ado, I would like to bring forth their presentations. To the participants of the Caribbean Ag Tech Summit, uh, I'm coming to you from the beautiful Turks and Caicos Islands, and we're happy to, to join you to give you in a nutshell what we're all about and what our vision is for the development of the agricultural sector. So uh, I think Turks and Caicos is, like most of the islands in the Caribbean, are known for tourism, uh, but more than any other island in the Caribbean, Turks and Caicos is probably the most dependent on tourism. Uh, we've been enjoying a bumper crop of visitors even during this pandemic period. And now uh, the economy is on a trajectory. Practically, we've had a V-shaped recovery after dismal 2020, and we're looking to do exceptionally well going forward. Of course, COVID-19 is substantially under control, very low infection rates, 70 plus uh, percent of our population are inoculated. So we're actually in a very good position to continue the economic growth that has been associated with the economy here in Turks and Caicos. I'd like to speak to you very briefly about the agricultural sector because uh, COVID-19 has taught us some really harsh lessons and that we cannot depend uh, completely on external sources of food supply. And so the focus uh, for our new thrust in expanding or uh, developing the agricultural sector is to make sure that we've got some, some degree of food security and um, at the moment, we're going to be making substantial investments in agriculture, horticulture, um, aquaculture. Uh, basically, the focus is on local food production to be able to supplement, first of all, to supplement uh, the imports that we have to have in order to uh, supply the population with food, but also uh, as a as a country where very little is grown and where we have a growing tourism sector, uh, huge amounts of food have to be imported in order to supply our hotels. So this is an area that we are looking to make significant investment in over the next couple of years. So I want to wish you a, a very productive summit and um, hopefully I'll have another opportunity in the future to speak to you face to face. May God bless your proceedings and may God bless the, our Caribbean islands. Thank you very much. Good day to all of our Caribbean colleagues. It is my pleasure to speak to you today as Minister with the Responsibility for Agriculture here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. I have a very extensive portfolio and the Department of Agriculture is one of what we call proposed game changes locally. Before coming into office, my government had already indicated our commitment to the development of the agriculture sector. TCI's overwhelming dependence on tourism creates risk for the economy. We are determined to urgently examine broad segmentation of the tourism product. But most importantly, we noted that we must diversify to build economic resilience and sustainability. The COVID-19 pandemic 
has also made it clear that we must find ways to feed ourselves, achieve food security, and cut the import bill. We are committed to ensuring that the people of the Turks and Caicos Islands have access to a constant and nutritious supply of food. We are committed to reducing the food import bill and retaining as much money in the local economy as possible. Our priority is to provide an enabling environment to increase food production, promote sustainable use of agriculture, land and fisheries resources, and facilitate local investment within the sector. My presentation will focus on our planned key strategies to accomplish this. The government of the Turks and Caicos Islands, in its quest to foster agriculture development, ensure food sovereignty and security, stimulate domestic food production, create employment and diversify its economy, has implemented a strategic approach in the immediate, medium and long term over a five year period. These strategies are in line with the National and Physical Development Plans and Vision 2040 to end hunger, establish food security and ensure sustainable agriculture. The immediate goals to be achieved within 200 days, that is six months, are Strategy 1, recognizing the fragility and unexpected impacts of pandemics on food availability. Similar to many of our international counterparts, the Turks and Caicos Islands launched a national food campaign entitled Growing Turks and Caicos Islands, aimed at encouraging citizens to plant and grow their own food. Through this program, more than 100,000 seeds, 3,000 seedlings, and 300 live fruits were distributed. Strategy number two, to provide financial aid to farmers in the form of agricultural grants. This grant system is presently being developed, targeting new agricultural enterprises inclusive of the agro-processing and the value chain industry, farm improvement grants, disaster relief funds, and as a stimulus to encourage the youth to get involved in agriculture, there would be an entrepreneur's fund targeted to individuals between the ages of 18 and 25. Strategy number three, establishing a national nursery, understanding the challenges that can be sometimes encountered with sourcing plant materials, initial work has begun to construct an updated nursery and greenhouse. Strategy number four, providing the sector with mechanization infrastructure and other input support. Our medium to long-term goals include providing concessions to ensure an increasing availability of local produced foods in an environmentally sustainable and socially just manner. To ensure that persons who work within our food supply chain that is growing, catching, producing, processing, transporting, retailing, and serving food can earn a decent living. Further, implementing a food subsidy program for the most vulnerable based on means testing to ensure that all Turks and Caicos Islanders have physical and economic access to adequate amounts of nutritious, safe, and culturally appropriate foods. Further, to establish the TCI Bureau of Standards within two years, with part of its function being to monitor the supply of food from all sources using a science-based risk assessment approach, thereby ensuring the safety of our food imports. Working with local partners to expand the domestic source for dependable food supply. Establishing a revolving food production loan fund to support farmers, fishermen, and domestic food producers and manufacturers to invest in technologies that allow them to maximize efficiency and profitability. As the Turks and Caicos Islands embark on its new journey to develop the agriculture sector, it recognizes the need to create that linkage between this industry and its main sector, tourism. The nexus between the two sectors is critical and care is being taken to ensure that whilst this is done, 
the environmental integrity and stability of the islands are maintained. With the creation of new tourism packages, more hoteliers are establishing in-house vegetable gardens and integrating the concept of farm to table on their menus to ensure continuous healthy food supply for their guests and resident staff. The horticulture industry cannot be left out as this is a way to incorporate the biodiverse indigenous flora and fauna that makes the Turks and Caicos Islands beautiful by nature into landscaping and nature trails. And finally, we have only just begun, but with the introduction of new policies and legislation, the Turks and Caicos Islands approved its first National Agriculture and Food Security Board that will help steer the agriculture industry into the future. Thank you, Honorable Premier Charles Washington Missick and the Honorable Josephine Connolly. I'm indeed pleased this afternoon to present on the agriculture sector of the Turks and Caicos Islands. To review the sector, we would look at the history, the present trends, and investment and research opportunities. In the famous words of MS Swaminathan, if agriculture goes wrong, nothing else will have a chance to do right. The Turks and Caicos Islands has recognized this, and this mandate has sparked the passion to develop and support this green industry. As a British overseas territory, which first started, Agriculture first started in the mid 19th century with the production of sea salt. Due to failure in maintaining fruit and vegetable production, sea salt was found to be suited to the resilient weather and environmental conditions within the Turks and Caicos Islands. It was primarily utilized for the production of fiber, which was used for the production of rope during the World War period. It has, it has continued to grow tremendously, especially as the salt industry started to plummet. It was not until 1990 that the production of sea salt ceased. Today, sea salt plants can be seen throughout the islands and it is usually housed in the National Museum. Following the closure of this industry, in the 1970s, there began the production of cash crops. Presently, the sector, including, excluding, sorry, the fisheries subsector, is mainly extensive with subsistence farming and small amounts of commercial systems, such as aquaculture and hydroponics. Approximately 30% of farmlands is utilized for crop production and cultivating of short-term cash crops. From the demographics, we can see that 30% of production is categorized as other, and that includes the horticulture and nursery industry. Following this, the popularity of types of production system are crop production, integrated and mixed farming, followed by livestock farming. Crop production is a predominant type of farming, accounting for almost 30% for the farming community. Crop production methods are usually in soil. However, in recent times, we have seen the advent and the growing interest in soilless methods, which includes hydroponics, greenhousing, containerized farming, such as microgreens, and aquaponics. And of course, the hospitality industry has been making more and more investments into in-house farming enterprises. The livestock production system only accounts for 8% of the agriculture sector. The main species read include small ruminants, mainly goats, poultry, which are layers, 
We are now seeing the growth of some of the exotic poultry species, such as guinea fowls. Rabbit production is quite small, and we also have pig production as well. If we continue to look at the demographics, at least 63% of our farmers are males and 37% are females. With regards to distribution of age, 63% of our farmers are greater than 60 years of age. And therefore, it is very important for us to stimulate our youth to get involved in the agriculture industry. If we look in terms of land tenure, most of our farmers tend to own their own property. However, we have 31% of our farmers owning crown lands or state lands. And we just have a small percent, which is 1%, who have access to family-owned properties. In terms of islands, the major agriculture-producing islands is the North, is North Capus, which accounts for 63%, followed by Providencialis and then 1% in Grand Turk and Middle Caicos. Hence, North Caicos is known as the breadbasket of the Turks and Caicos Islands. What are the investment opportunities that we now have available? Well, to further look at this, we are going to focus in on four particular areas. This includes understanding the 10 reasons why we need to invest in the agriculture sector in the Turks and Caicos Islands, Secondly, what are the opportunities that exist for agriculture, new agriculture enterprises? Thirdly, what are the available policy and strategic plan trusts? And last but not least, what are the investment incentives? So the 10 reasons why we need to invest in Turks and Caicos Islands agriculture industry. Firstly, it's all about location. It's, the islands are actually located in close proximity to North America and its regional neighbors to the south. And this gives us good potential for trade access. There's also the presence of frameworks and systems and strategic plans. The government has recognized the importance of agriculture and has implemented the required frameworks and systems. We continue to do so. The journey has just begun. Thirdly, within this fiscal year, we have seen increased budgetary allocations towards the agriculture sector. We have also noticed that there are linkages with major sectors such as tourism, which is the island's main contributor to national GDP. In addition to this, we also see the linkage between agriculture and the health sector. Turks and Caicos Islands have been blessed with multiple islands. And because of this, each island has its varied soil and idiosyncrasies that may have the potential to be cultivated. There's also the possibility of ap applying new plant technologies. Lands that are not suited for traditional farming can be converted into soilless systems. There's also the need to have private-public partnerships. The sector is young and offers many opportunities for development and engagement in the private sector. The investment environment is open to facilitating this. There's also the recognition of the need for environmental sustainability. There are environmental fragilities associated with agriculture production, particularly in an island state. And as such, if we want to develop agriculture systems, they must promote environmental stability. Market access. We have realized that the market for agriculture is not limited to supermarkets, nor the hotel industry. And as such, very soon, the Turks and Caicos Islands will be opening its first farmer's market which gives our farmers an alternative market access. And last, but certainly not least, as aforementioned, there was the approval of the appointment of the first National Agriculture and Food Security Board. And this board would strategically guide the development plans of the sector. 
go towards investment opportunities? What are the new agriculture enterprises? Well, there are several areas that we have highlighted. This can include the food processing and preservation industry, also production inputs, such for retailers and wholesalers, the need for sales of seeds, soils, agrochemicals. There's also that growing need for veterinary supplies. There's also the importance of mechanization and other farm equipment to drive the sector. We definitely need market research. And in terms of exploring alternative forms of production systems, there's aquaculture, apiculture, horticulture, and mariculture as well. We also need to look into commodity trading for importers and transportation, and looking at water resources, such as irrigation systems, that can indeed help boost the industry forward. There is always a need for policy and strategic planning trust. And thus far, the Turks and Caicos Islands have been able to encapsulate some of the development frameworks in its agriculture policy 2018 and the 2021 plan for empowerment of the people agenda. These policy documents set out specific strategies for key stakeholders to build an aggregate agribusiness economy capable of delivering sustained prosperity by meeting domestic food security goals and supporting sustainable income, job growth, and boosting production. The present agriculture policy objectives includes contributing to the national GDP, significantly reducing food imports, and integrating agriculture commodity value chains into the broader supply chains of domestic and foreign industries. We are also looking at promoting the responsible use of land, water, and other natural resources. Further policy objectives include the inclusion of incentive packages to assist our farmers, facilitating food security, food safety, and quality nutrition, inclusion of agriculture within the education system, and of course, promoting linkages with major regional agencies. What are the investment incentives? Well, through the farmer registration system, the government has designed investment incentives to support participation in the sector. While some of these incentives are in the forms of exemptions, there are many more that leverage on specific government policies, performance of the companies, as well as relevant international investment treaties. Some of these are duty concessions of up to 7.5% on agricultural inputs, agriculture equipment, and agro-processing equipment, waiver on import payment fees, waivers on planning fees, and grant programs are presently in progress. What are the research opportunities in agriculture? Well, the government has its only own farm known as Q Farm located in the island of North Capas. This farm is located on 140 acres of land and it's the first government operated farm with only about eight acres presently being occupied. The farm's mandate was changed to be a research training and development center for disseminating information to farmers in 2019. It was first opened in the 1980s and its main goal was the commercial production of shorten crops. However, the facility was upgraded in 2019 to include an office, infrastructure, solar panels, animal pens, packing room, and we proceed on to phase two of this project. Through a phasal approach, phase two, as I mentioned previously, would involve the construction of a national nursery and greenhouse. So over time, the intent is to do more land clearing and develop most of the unused areas on this property. 
Pew Farm started one of its first experiments in March of 2021, which was conducted to investigate different methods of trellising and tomatoes utilizing a new irrigation system. With the use of this experiment, farmers would now be able to utilize the appropriate technology and ultimately result in improved yield of their tomato crops. So join us on the new quest of developing agriculture in the Turks and Caicos Island. An investment awaits you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shelley, for, for that eye-opening presentation. Um, not much is known within the Cari Forum region about the Turks and Caicos Islands in terms of agriculture and, and, and your thrust towards high tech high-tech high agri. I mean, we heard from the Honorable Premier, we heard from the Minister, that this is a mandate that you now have to, to become more food secure. Um, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, possibly you can, you can just um, respond. Um, so, so in looking at, you know, if, if an investor wants to come in and, and an investor wants to take advantage of the incentives and and, and invest in, in the Turks and Caicos Islands, particularly North Caicos. Tell us a little bit about the support services that are offered um, either by the ministry, I don't know if it's offered by Invest Turks and Caicos. Let us know, for example, they wanna access land, they wanna access incentives. How do they go about taking advantage of, of the opportunities that are there in the Turks and Caicos Islands? So all investment opportunities that we specifically with agriculture goes through the Invest Takes and Give Islands. One of the things is that in addition to this, if you are seeking access to land, it goes through the process of applying through the Crown Lands Department, which is directly linked to the Attorney General's office. However, if you are looking to register as a farmer, which is the precursor before you get any of the incentive packages, you are directed to the Department of Agriculture. And once it's a commercial entity, you have to be registered as a licensed business to practice or to operate in the and Caicos Islands. And from there, it generally proceeds to getting access. And in terms of what incentives you do need, there may be the need to apply through cabinet to seek that approval. Understood. So the first stop then would be Invest Turks and Caicos. And they will take them, take the, any investor through the process of going to the necessary institutions or, or ministries or agencies, um, depending on, on, on their investment. Yeah. Perfect. I thought it was interesting, the Q Farm um, project in North Caicos. Um, tell us a little bit more about that project. What are some of the, 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 the new um, you know, technologies that are being planned for testing out there. And, and can, is this a PPP? Is this an opportunity for investors to come in and partner with the government to, to, to explore, um, you know, testing new, new technologies on, on the farm? It is definitely an opportunity for private public partnership. Presently, most of our experiments has been done domestically within our department, and we would like to expand that field because we believe that there is great opportunity to learn from external investors. And we can definitely take that forward to the realm where we get that opportunity to also engage our farmers. So some of the experiments that we started off with are very simple projects, which we're looking at different varieties. How does it grow in the specific soil that we have, which is very limestone based? How do we water or irrigate these type of varieties? Is there any need to do um, weed control? And at what point do we have to increase our weed control? So we have started with very basic studies and looking at things that are applicable and to some of the challenges which the farmers do face. And we have been utilizing that to train our farmers in terms of those areas and looking at ways that we could definitely seek and um, increase the horizon and the, um, the um, information that's available to our farmers. 
Perfect. So again, if anybody wants to, um, to, to, to take advantage of the opportunity that the Q Farm in North Caicos offers, then they would once again go to Invest Turks and Caicos. This one, they could definitely come to the Department of Agriculture. <laughs> ah, fantastic. And so they would speak directly with you, Shelley? Yes. yes well, well, if you, if possible, could you put your, in the chat, could you just um, type your, your email address so that persons can get, can know how to get in touch with you directly? Um, while you're doing that, I, I thought as well to ask you a little bit, I mean, I hear you talking about um, tomatoes. So right now, there are tomatoes um, that, that you're testing new ways of producing at the Q Farm in North Caicos. But what products, what agricultural products do you think are in, no, well not think because this is your area. What agricultural products are of significant demand in the Turks and Caicos Islands right now that local production is 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 a must. You, you're you're promoting those as 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 entry products right now for any investor. I think one of the um, sectors, one of the crops, which is very important and forms a rich part of the history of the Turks and Caicos Islands, is corn. So you have several of our farmers who would not only stop at the point of just producing live seeds in corn. But it would take it a little further in terms of agro-processing and produce products such as corn flour, which is widely used and utilized within the Turks and Caicos Islands. So that is one of the particular areas. We are also very interested in root crops, root crop development. Obviously, the uh, hurricane zone, hurricane belt. We are definitely looking at those species which tend to be a little more resilient to such climatic conditions. We also have the um, typical crops which you have the lettuce, the specialty items such as the basils, the seasonings, more and more persons are going into this, particularly as we develop and we see more bread, bed and breakfast facilities being produced and that there is that great interest in terms of producing the herbs and persons are looking at the medicinal properties of some of these plants. So those are particular areas where we would like to see greater investment. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about the fish and aquaculture industry in the Turks and Caicos. So you're known, I mean, you, you have some of the, the clearest waters that we see in the Caribbean. I keep saying that you add bleach to the sand, but, but, but tell us a little bit about the fish and aquaculture industry that you're well known for. Um, how are you advancing in that area and what kind of investment are you looking for? So specifically, the agriculture industry would fall particularly under the Department of Agriculture. So in that realm, um, prior to 2017, when we experienced the devastating effects of Hurricane Irma Maria, we had an existing Kong farm. And that was one of the major um, aquaculture enterprises that we did have. Now we are recovering from that area and we are going more and more towards developing that area even more. We also have some of the islands which have remnant salt ponds from the salt industry. And those might be the opportunity to look at developing those existing ponds into aquaculture ponds for production. So these are specific areas we are looking at. There is definitely the interest from external investors and stakeholders. And we want to see that move slowly along not slowly along, but we want to see it progress. And one of the things is that, yes, we are surrounded by some of the most beautiful waters. And obviously, we understand how fragile the environment can be and how we need to be cognizant of the beautiful waters around us. We want to remain beautiful by nature. So in terms of having those um, water-related industries, we need to take the utmost care to make sure that it is sustainable over time. Sounds good. And um, if we are talking about production, what are the opportunities um, for, for, for not only local sales, but also exports? Are there particular products that 
you would recommend to any potential investor coming in if we're talking about um, exports? Is there a significant demand that you've seen um, for countries or territories close to you or that you have access to where exports are concerned? At this time, our export market is very small, but the punk is one of the very popular items. Lobster is also very popular. So we can see that definitely taking the export market sometime in the near future. We also have the specialty um, vegetables, the specialty, as I said, the seasonings, the herbs, there is a great um, need for it. There would possibly be the need for further uh, processing and preservation. But these are definitely areas that we could see the Turks and Caicos Islands going into and expanding over time. Perfect. I think I've run out of questions for you today, um, Shelley. But is there anything in particular in closing, in wrapping up, that you would like to say to a potential investor who's coming in? And, and when we say potential investor coming in, we're not just talking about foreign investors. We're also talking about local investors people within the Turks and Caicos Islands who would want to get into agriculture, um, high-tech agriculture. Are there any last words or last messages that you would like to see to those potential investors who are listening in today? I would always say the sky is the limit and there's nothing that's impossible, particularly with God. So definitely Turks and Caicos Islands is we are very conscious of our environment. We are conscious of the need for developing agriculture. And I think those are wonderful attributes to do all the groundwork that we need to take us there in the future. We have a good support system. And with that, um, the sky is definitely the limit. Thank you very much, Shelley. Um... So with us today, we had Dr. Shelley Bridgewater from the Ministry of Agriculture. And we also had the premier messages from the premier and the Minister of Agriculture within the Turks and Caicos Islands. We wanna thank you very much for this country presentation on investment opportunities in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Please join us tomorrow for, as we continue our Caribbean Ag Tech Investment Summit. Tomorrow we begin at 9.30 a.m. The link is the same. We will be reviewing investment opportunities in key market segments across the region, looking specifically at root crops and staples, agro-processing, the fruits and vegetables industry, honey industry, meat and fish products, and medicinal herbs. So join us tomorrow at 9.30 as we go deep into the investment opportunities that are available at the sectoral level. Thank you again, Ms. Ms. Bridgewater, Dr. Bridgewater. Yes, Thanks for joining us and staying with us for the entire day. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.